But there's one artist that's considered the queen of bounce. The late, great Magnolia Shorty. Magnolia Shorty. Magnolia Shorty. 28-year-old Renetta Lowe, better known to her fans as Magnolia Shorty, was gunned down yesterday. On Monday, December 20th, 2010, rapper Magnolia Shorty, a.k.a. Renetta Yamika Lowe, was booked for a show in Miami. She was headed to her apartment in a gated community called the Georgetown of New Orleans. Shorty had planned to stop at home for a few minutes to grab a few things before going to perform at a bounce festival. But she never made it to her performance. 25-year-old Jerome Man Man Hampton was in the car with her as she pulled through the gate in her Chevy Malibu. At the time, she had committed herself to helping out a lot of people who wanted to get into the rap game since Man Man had recently gotten out of jail and was considered a rising talent. Magnolia Shorty had taken him under her wing, but before she could get to her apartment, a crowned Vic quickly pulled in behind her car and circled around, cutting her off. The occupants inside the Crown Vic then began to open fire. Shorty quickly tried to drive out of the complex, but she slammed into the community gate, which had automatically shut. The assailants chased down her vehicle on foot and continued to shoot, assassinating both Renetta and Jerome before getting back in their car and fleeing the scene. When her body was found, it was discovered that Magnolia Shorty had been shot 26 times in broad daylight. There were no witnesses. She was 28 years old. As fans and loved ones processed their grief, rumors began to swirl about the suspicious circumstances surrounding Magnolia Shorty's passing. One theory that started to gain traction was that her hit was related to a feud within the music industry. The cutthroat nature of the business caused some to speculate that unresolved tension with rivals in the scene might have escalated to a fatal level. Others suggested that the hit might have been ordered by someone from Shorty's past, someone holding a grudge, like her husband, Carl Bridgewater, who was forced to watch her rise to fame from behind bars. According to Renetta's sister, there was a bit of an argument concerning her will a few months before Shorty was executed. Renetta's family had also warned her against helping out Jerome Manman Hampton due to his history of gang-related activities. Maybe Magnolia Shorty had simply been with the wrong person at the wrong time. The passing of a loved one is always tragic, but it is especially hard when the person is so beloved, and Magnolia Shorty was adored. The community surrounding her was desperate for answers, trying to gain closure and move forward. Police labeled the incident a drive-by shooting, and the investigation wouldn't go any further until nearly four years later. In July of 2014, Gregory Stewart, aka Rabbit, was brought in by investigators as part of a multi-year sting operation focused on stopping the trafficking of heroin in New Orleans. Gregory informed police that he and four other men had assassinated Renetta Lowe and Jerome Hampton. Four members of the 39ers gang were arrested based on the information that Stewart gave investigators. McCoy Rat Walker, Terrius T. Red Oni, Rico Freaky Jackson, and Tyrone T. Bone Knockham. Stewart agreed to a plea deal that allowed him to skip out on some of the heavier hit charges in exchange for pleading guilty to heroin trafficking. Finally, Magnolia Shorty's fans and loved ones would have answers to the questions that had haunted them for years. What exactly happened to Magnolia Shorty, who assassinated her? And why? One of the gang members, Rico Jackson, gave a thorough testimony that shed light on what led up to Renetta Lowe losing her life. How many people did you see in the car? Two. Okay. Did you know they were when we pulled off? Yes. How did you know they were Because we shot a lot of times. According to Rico's testimony, he saw Gregory Stewart and the rest of the group pull up in a white Crown Vic. They had guns, a rifle, two handguns, 
and an assault rifle. Rico approached the car and asked him where they were headed, and they told him that they were headed out to find Jerome Manman Hampton and assassinate him. Manman was a rival of their group, and Rico, in particular, was afraid that Manman wanted him gone because Rico had been one of the people responsible for putting Manman in prison. Jackson hopped in the car with them and they left. Someone in the car got a tip that Manman was on the eastern side of town, near the Georgetown apartments. So the group headed that way. T Red knew the passcode to the gate, which allowed them to let themselves in. They parked at the complex and waited for a few minutes, but then decided to go to the gas station for cigars. Once there, they bribed a man standing nearby to go into the gas station and buy what they needed to avoid being seen on any cameras. It wasn't long before a white Malibu passed by containing Man Man, and they followed the car into the apartment complex. McCoy Walker and Rico Jackson were the first to hop out of the car, opening fire. They both fired one shot before Magnolia Shorty tried to speed past them, crashing into the gate. The rest of the gang then began to open fire, except for T-Bone, who stayed in the car. Rico's gun briefly jammed up, but he joined in the shooting after he fixed it. They let out hundreds of shots between the four of them, shooting for two or three minutes straight before leaving Magnolia Shorty and Man Man to bleed out. Seven people have been killed on the streets of New Orleans since the weekend. Three of those killed were in New Orleans East and included rapper Renetta Lowe, better known as Magnolia Shorty. Her prompted outcry on radio stations and social media. The city of New Orleans mourned together for the Queen of Bounce. Magnolia Shorty was a cultural icon and had been a source of inspiration for many, as she was only the second woman in history to sign a record deal with Cash Money Records. Trishel Williams, aka Miss T, was the first. When Miss T heard what happened to her good friend, she was shocked and saddened. Other colleagues and friends in the New Orleans hip hop and R&B community took to Twitter to express their love for Magnolia Shorty, including Lil Wayne and Brian Birdman Williams. Fans flooded the internet with an outpour of mourning, love, and disbelief. Fan pages were made on Facebook and Instagram to memorialize her. Vigils and memorials were held in Magnolia Shorty's honor, as well as a funeral attended by thousands. After she was laid to rest, Renetta's body was loaded into a carriage. Thousands followed the carriage as it carried her through the streets of New Orleans. Both New Orleans hip hop and R&B stations, 102.9 and 93.3 FM, played blocks of Shorty songs all day, stopping only to take calls from tearful fans and loved ones. Tab, Hot Boy Turk, called into 93.3 from jail. This just hurts me from the heart, Tab said. Every time I call home, it's like someone else is gone. When is this gonna stop? The adoration for Shorty didn't stop there. Terrius Gray, more commonly known as Juvenile, worked with Lowe on several tracks while signed to Cash Money in the 90s. When I think about her, he said, I think about how small she was with a big voice and how brave she was as a woman going to some of the areas she went to and getting on the mic and making her songs. Producer Manny Fresh also remembers Renetta Lowe as dedicated, sweet, and energetic. Magnolia Shorty's passing was not just the loss of an artist, but the stifling of potential. Fans mourn the loss of the records that would never be made and the collaborations that would now never happen. But her estate confirmed that all of her music that she was working on will continue to be released as planned. Had been working with her, they still have some tracks that had not been released, and they say they are gonna continue to release her music. After her passing, Magnolia Shorty became a symbol of resilience. Her music and her story continues to inspire new generations. Her voice and lyrics continue to be sampled in popular songs such as Drake's In My Feelings in 2018, which became a number one hit. In 2021, what started as a fun Yardy Girl project turned into a breathtaking memorial, a mural entitled 
New Orleans Queen of Sound and Soul, was erected at 1401 La Harp Street by Tyler Maiden, Antonio Zanaro, Cara Crowley, and Madeline Kelly. It honors female musicians of New Orleans, both past and present, and includes a gorgeous section dedicated to Magnolia Shorty. She joins other legendary musicians like Irma Thomas, DJ Soul Sister, and Angelica Jelly Joseph. The Queen of Bounce may be gone, but she will never be forgotten. She left behind many family members and loved ones, including her widower, Carl Bridgewater, who was hit one year after her passing. It was Magnolia Shorty's dream to open the door for countless artists, especially women, to follow her into the rap industry. She leaves behind a legacy of kindness and empowerment. Her memory serves as a reminder to honor those who paved the way for our success while working hard to guide the generations to come. R.I.P. Magnolia Shorty